performance of the company, our profitability, liquidity, and gearing ratio uh, all improved. Maybe starting with the profitability, our gross profit margin jumped from 19% to 26%. Uh, our EBITDA margin uh, closed in at 18% compared to almost neutral in the previous year. And our net profit margin uh, closed at 9% compared to a loss of 4% in the previous year. Uh, the, the, ratio, the, other, the other ratios are also positive as indicated on your screens. I want to move over to the liquidity. Our current ratio continues to be above two, improving from 2.1 in the previous year to 2.4 in the current year. And our quick ratio is also above one for both years, improving from 1.1 in the previous year to 1.3 in the current year. Uh, working capital has increased significantly from um, 78 billion in the previous year to 103.5 billion in the current year. The main reason for the improvement in working capital is uh, uh, profitability from operations and also part of the payment, payment from the Zambia government. Our net cash position has also improved from the 7.6 billion we closed at yes, last year to about 8.5 billion this year. Gearing, which is a percentage of debt to equity, has also improved. And the main reason for this was payment of the debt uh, as uh, in line with the covenants, and then also not requiring additional debt for, for the operations because uh, we are in, in a positive cash position. Um, about the cash cycle, uh, the cash cycle, we are at 169 days compared to 142 days. And the main reason for that is the increase in inventory days where we are keeping the stock to keep the factory running and also to cope with the challenges in the geopolitical environment uh, of these days. Thank you very much. I would like to hand over to Ajay. Thank you, Fred. Um, so as we shared that there were two main focuses management had in the previous year. One was to bring the business to profit. And I think the second one was to expand the portfolio. And that portfolio expansion actually becomes the basis for the future growth. Most of you know, historically, Simplex UCIL primarily focuses on three therapeutic areas and produces products in those therapeutic areas, HIV, malaria, and hepatitis B. But we're also happy to share that we expanded that portfolio and therapy areas to add two new therapy areas. One is macrolide antibiotics and pain management. And we have introduced two products, azithromycin 500 milligram and ciprodon plus. And both of these products are locally produced and, and manufactured here in the facility in Luzera. I would also like to draw attention to the revenue trend in last four years, specifically post-listing, and then how the business is, is performing, and then uh, a breakdown on therapy areas, specifically drawing attention to how the new product range started to shape the therapy and started to expand the pie chart what we see. So if you see the revenue trend from 2018-19, it is the listing year when the company was listed, it was 195 billion Uganda shilling. And it has grown to 267 billion if you take FY2122, which stocks an 11% average increase uh, in the four years. 2020-21 uh, was an exceptional year with 48% jump, and it has a big component of months of COVID opportunities, which was received at the onset of COVID, where the borders of the countries were closed and they were not able to get supplies from the routine suppliers and simple QCL plays a pivotal role at the time. If you see the therapeutic area, which is in the right, and you see a very small gray pie, which is moving from 4 billion to 9 billion, this is where the new product started to contribute. And this is the private market and therapy area which is newly introduced in the business. Can we go next? We've also created a growth engine and we are focusing on four main areas. And this is not just for one year, but it's for long term, how this growth engines will keep on performing. And the first area is growth and sustainability. And it's primarily focuses on five main areas, customer-based penetration. It means the existing customers, 
with the existing portfolio, how we repeat and regenerate and generate more sales with them. The second area is product expansion, which primarily talks about all new segment, which is private market, and it has new therapy lines and a new products into it. The third one is market acceleration, which talks about increasing exports. I know we, we have declined in export uh, sales versus last year, but it is primarily because there were some COVID opportunities which, which, which we received in the previous year. But now we are building a base to expand and export more products to, uh, to rest of Africa outside Uganda, and we want to accelerate that space. I think the fourth one is to make sure compliance. As many of you know, we are of the few pharmaceuticals company in the region which are WHO pre-qualified. And I think that qualification and the world standard is always hold up to the, the top and it's always remained a focus for the management that we may remain compliant to the global regulatory standards. And the fifth one is our renewed com commitment to governance, community upliftment, access to affordable healthcare and environmental conservation. <clears throat> I think the second base area where we have done a lot of work in the previous years is cost leadership. And you see the impact of those in our results as well. But we will continue to work on it. I think it's a continuous improvement area. And we'll continue to improve in operation cost, continue to make sure that our margins has been always improved. And we'll adopt digital tools to process and simplifications, which again adds to cost leadership. Third area is business development which is it's essentially is makes what we can sell in future and it focuses on access to products, technology and market presence. And I think the fourth area is, is a balance of profitability and the investment for future. We already made what, that one decision that, that we are investing in anti-cancer, sickle cell and TB production facility, which is the future growth driver for the company. Next slide, please. Now, those are regular growth engine, which continues year and year after. But let's also focus and share some details on what our key priority for FY23, the year which we have started now. So we will focus on private market and we'll focus on building strong sales structures and access, accelerate our growth in the private market sector, especially in the domestic market. The new facility for, for future growth, anti-cancer manufacturing plant, We'll make sure that that construction begins and pretty soon because we have done the detailed engineering work, we have completed it, we have received almost all regulatory approvals from the local authorities, and we're going to very soon start the groundbreaking to start construction. Reimagining the portfolio, I think it's become pivotal for the company to expand beyond what they were doing and go into therapy areas which is not just HIV, malaria, and hepatitis, and also go into some lifestyle disease, disease therapy areas as well. And in that quest, we'll produce nine new products in this year, and also expand the therapy areas uh, beyond the two which is already introduced. We will focus on data-rich tech platform, and specifically in the area of supply chain, manufacturing, and finance. And this is, again, going back into uh, uh, the cost leadership um, element, what we were talking about. And they will underpin the cost leadership in the longer run as well. Financials, we will target sustainable and profitable growth. Uh, given the fundamentals, what we have put in place, we are, very, we are hopeful that we'll continue to grow and continue to grow profitably. And we will focus on improving overall return on ratios. You see our ratios significantly improving with respect to the previous year, but we're gonna take it from here to the next level. Sustainability, it's in focus across the world and we as a company will also not be, um, not be shying away to take a target on sustainability. We'll have a strong focus, build on legacy rooted in caring for life. We always believed in caring for life and serving the people and the communities and the planet. And the last is, we, we strongly believe that this all could not be achieved with, without the staff and the people who work for us. We will keep on focusing on retaining our talent and attracting best in class talent to support our growth strategies. Thank you very much. Um, I think we have a Q&A now.
Um, so we, we present our short summary on, on what happened in the last year. Our detailed results are already there in our website. So you can, can go and have a look on the results as well. And I hope you have looked into it. 